Hello, and welcome to the Astro Energy Astrology Show podcast with astrologer Shelley Overton. Okay, hi, John. Anyway, um, we're talking astrology. So there's a lot of astrology to get to today. And the first is we've got a moon in Taurus. It's a new moon. And that happens tonight around 10 o'clock. 10, do, 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 do. we're on one week ahead. Hang on a second. 10.26 p.m. So 10.26 p.m., the moon and the sun will be opposite sides of the world. And that means that we're going into the energy of a new moon, which means initiating energy in the sign of Taurus. It's a brand new energy because the sun's only going to be in early degrees of Scorpio, not Scorpio. What the heck am I talking about? Um, I'm sorry. The sun and the moon are conjunct. <laughs> Get your head together here. Um, it's technology that's giving me a little wackadoo. Okay. So anyway, the sun and the moon are going to be in Taurus at two degrees and so they're going to act as one. They're going to be in cooperation. Um, I do see that as a push towards getting back to retail, getting back to business. The moon is initiating this energy. You know, talking about uh, the virus, we're really looking at so many moving parts that we're ultimately going to be um, up and down with it. There's gonna be peaks and valleys. And we're going to see a lot of different things coming in. We're going to have um, high points and low points because there are so many moving parts over the summer. We've got the retrograde coming up in May, which definitely will be going back to the old energy. We're going to see um, more of the old energy coming in. I'm sorry, I just wanted to raise this up somehow, maybe like that. Hang on. Could you get me um, a stack of books, please? Thank you. Or you know what, that little box over there would be good. Juliet, by the window, the box. Thank you. Anyway, um, yeah, it's a little rough today, I admit it. <laughs> there we go, that's better. Thank you. So, um, okay, we're good. So, clear that energy. Okay, um, Taurus is going to be an energy of growth. Since we have the sun and the moon and Uranus all there, it's going to be a bit... Uh, back and forth. We're going to see unexpected things happen. A lot of independent minded people are going to rise up, which we've seen recently this week. They're saying, no, we need things to be about money. We need to get back to the way things used to be in tangible, real world, down to earth things. Today's Earth Day, happy Earth Day. Um, and so it's going to be a bit chaotic. We also have, like I said, the retrogrades coming in. And so retrogrades will be Venus and Jupiter and Saturn. We've got Pluto retrograding next week. So what the retrogrades do is pull us back to how things were, especially with Saturn. As Saturn retrogrades, we're going to go back to the energy of um, tradition and the way it was, the authority, the hierarchy. And so it's going to feel more normal, but it isn't necessarily going to be normal. So, um, well, it's the new normal, as they say. But what is normal, what is the place we're going to, is the energy that we've been experiencing, the Saturn and Aquarius. And so I wrote down quite a few things, actually, of what's been going on with Saturn and Aquarius and uh, things that are very quintessential Saturn and Aquarius. So first off, the thing I wrote was the markets fell. The reason the markets fell astrologically is because Saturn went into Taurus, which rules money, but he also squared his own ruling planet, which is Uranus in Taurus, the sign of money. So having both of those happen, Saturn and Aquarius, um, independence, not attachment at all to the material world. He is really the counter argument to Capricorn. And so when Saturn goes into the Aquarian energy, we see things cool, cool down and freeze up, that money is not the central focus, where Capricorn wants the tangibles, wants it down to earth, and wants to know that the material world is real and good and tangible. Aquarius does not. Aquarius is about freedom more than anything, about independence and autonomy. 
And Aquarius wants to start his own company. He wants to be free of authority figures. He wants to be his own authority figure, which is why autonomy is a key idea for Aquarius. So um, oil fell, which also happened during the same timing. And yesterday, I guess it was minus $40 a barrel, which literally means they have to pay people to pick up the oil where they store it and take it away, that they're not even selling it, they're paying people to take it because it was such an overproduction. The environment was is clearing up because we are all holed up, Saturn restricting us. The environment uh, all over the world is starting to bounce back with uh, nature kind of taking over again, as my dad said, nature always takes it back. Um, and I think that was a quote from someone else, but I don't know who. Uh, schooling at home. Working at home on the internet, internet is Aquarius. It is technology that brings us socially closer. Um, we isolate at home, Saturn in Aquarius, especially for the US chart, which is ruled by Scorpio, Scorpio rising, which puts Aquarius in the house of home and family. So now we all have that restriction coming into home, at least in America, I guess the world as well. But um, that's part of the Capricorn axis for the world point. Um, isolating for the greater good, Aquarius, we're all in this together. One World Together live stream, which was last weekend, if you watched it, mental health and anxiety are big uh, issues coming into the fore in the last year or so. I've seen more and more. Definitely the children born around the millennium are having more anxiety uh, and having to deal with it. And those children are born like little radars for this energy. The news and uh, stronger social media on uh, connections for social media, internet, um, you know, we're, we're connecting more that way because we're isolated. Um, the consequences of power are laid bare. So um, Amazon is influencing us to a great degree, and now they are having a lot of their employees speak up about um, not not being able to be protected at work and being pushed to work, work, work. So um, the collective and people who are protesting are getting fired. So we're seeing the ills of the kind of like the union mentality where we're all in this together at work and we need our, um, our rights maintained in the workplace and it's not a union shop as I understand. And so people are speaking out, but then they're being squashed, which is definitely the dynamic of how unions came about. Um, science is trying to find a virus cure. So now science comes to the fore all over the world and that is also very Aquarian. Entrepreneurial opportunities and insistence on a new business model over the internet, um, connecting to people that are far away all over the world. It is a global economy while we are pulling local, which also kind of parallels the idea that we as people are individuals within the collective and that the Aquarian energy when it comes to self and identity is very much about um, bringing in who we are as a person and everybody embraces everybody's individuality while we work together as a collective. So um, let's see here, bike sales are booming. You know, a very good Aquarian energy, uh, the technology behind or the science behind mobility and invention being a bike like all those years ago and now people are getting back out into nature with the bikes. Um, I don't know what will happen, the whole idea that we're kind of clueless where it's gonna go. Definitely Aquarius doesn't give us a heads up per se, and that's because the energy is very quantum. It comes in from all directions. It comes through time and space, um, like atoms. We don't necessarily completely understand an atom because it is a particle of energy that comes and goes and can act in quantum ways. So um, we really need to bump our science ideas up to a quantum level to really understand this. So the point of not knowing how things are gonna work is really the whole point of what's going on, that it's about letting go of what we understand and what we can rely on, which is Capricorn, and it's about embracing the new, embracing things that are different, um, 
alternate ideas, alternate lifestyles, alternate realities, that we are really coming into a time where in astrology, Aquarius comes before Pisces. Um, I have Saturn at zero degrees Pisces, and by progression, it's in late degrees Aquarius. So this energy is pretty familiar to me. So the Aquarian energy is like we're waking up to ideas that are beyond the predictable, which is a Capricorn energy. And this is the last quadrant of a chart. So um, I don't even have a chart around. I was going to print out one. I didn't get around to it. So maybe I can um, get this one going real quick before my podcast is over. Anyway, um, so Aquarius energy wakes us up to the ideas, wakes us up to electrical um, energy in our brains, which stimulates us to be more aware. Pisces energy brings us into our emotion and it brings back into the body all these ideas that we're now being exposed to. So as time goes on, as we get closer to the Pisces energy, we are going to embrace the idea and take it on and blend our energy as a collective. And so really, this is the precipice of the awakening of a new idea, a new era that we are beyond just the physical body and the physical form moving into something that's much more quantum in idea much more connected energetically to the total picture which is what aquarius is really great at the total picture so as we move into pisces pisces blends all of that energy and we start to well, and even in Aquarius, we start to really pick up more psychic awareness and we're more telekinetic or te not even telekinetic. Um, what is it? Um, where you can, you can talk with your mind. <laughs> Telekinesis, not telekinesis. Um, oh, I don't know the word. Anyway, um, so psychic. We're just going to be more aware of is it other telepathic? people's thoughts, other people's emotions and feelings and what their energy is. So we can read people more accurately as time goes on. And so um, I, I just wanted to touch a little bit on that because it is really the push on where we're going. And as we continue to move through this year, we are going to experience the past, the Capricorn energy, because now Taurus initiated all of this awakening and this awareness we are going to get a stronger push for what has been going on with the markets because the moon and the sun, there is a shift going on. Yes, the moon can be a significator, but that means it gives us the answer. And then the sun, sun shines the light and the information and Uranus detaches us. So we will feel a bit of detachment from how we are making money or what's going on in our financial lives. It can also mean a detachment from the, uh, the energy of connectedness to people and how we feel as a couple and in love. Anyway, excuse me. <laughs> so as the sun and the moon go over Uranus, it really sun shines that light on alternative um, technology, alternative finance, the markets, how are we going to interact with our money and finance and business and retail? It's all part of that same connectedness. And then uh, Uranus is bringing science to the physical body, to the physical structure, to the material world. So science is really as much as um, certain political entities are poo-pooing the idea of science. And I live in Florida, so... Um, they're, they've capped off a lot of the communication about how science affects the climate here in Florida. And um, I was just reading yesterday about Rick Scott, the former governor, who now is a senator, and he contained a lot of the vernacular. We can't, can't even discuss global warming in the government, and you will have either uh, censorship around what you're saying or you'll be fired for using this vernacular in Florida. And that's what he took with him when he left the state and went to Washington. Um, the current governor 
is kind of back and forth. He is definitely friends with Trump, but he has put in place a lot more environmental uh, protections that were gone when he came into office. So it's kind of 50-50 with him. Um, anyway, so, whoops, sorry about that. We'll have this kind of uh, strong shift uh, around, around environment and growing things, agriculture, um, they're plowing food under in the fields because they can't get it to market and the market dried up because everyone's inside. And um, yes, there still is a market to a degree. I mean, we go out, we've got to get food, but the amount of food, there's, there's no system in place right now that is transporting it where it needs to go at the level it was. And so um, locally we have a farm that I just read about on Facebook yesterday who is potentially going to have to plow $4 million worth of cucumbers under because they can't get it to market and they don't have, they can't give it to um, the people. People can't get out, enough people can't get out to get it and they don't have the transportation means and the, the um, yeah, the marketing. So it's a real concern with Taurus, Uranus and Taurus is agriculture. It's about being independent and so, where we might be independent with our uh, businesses and you know Saturn energy going into Aquarius wants us to be more entrepreneurial. Uh, Uranus and Taurus is saying grow your food at home and um, I would encourage that as well. I think that we are going to be coming into a time this year um, and throughout the end you know to the end when Saturn goes back into Aquarius now is the time to really start thinking about that so um, you know you want Sorry about that. You want to be prepared for what's coming. So we have Mercury at 19 Aries today. And Mercury in Aries is continuing to be an aggressive energy. Whenever I see Mercury, well, Mercury, and I'm hoping, <laughs> Mercury, I, I respect you, I'm going to say, because every time I mention Mercury, technology happens, something goes on. But Mercury in Aries is more aggressive. And we just had a major shooting in Nova Scotia this past weekend and Canada is much more, um, it's not a gun culture per se, other than say hunting. And they had this, um, I think they lost 22 or 23 people at last count in Nova Scotia for a gunman. So Mercury and Aries, and then we have a new moon joining the sun, which can be emotional, it can be family, home, the restriction, again, squaring, there, the planets are moving into a square with Saturn. I definitely see as Mercury gets closer to a square with Saturn in Aquarius, that's going to be a much more aggressive energy. I, the next two weeks, ramping up of this more masculine, I need to control it through force. And especially when it hits Taurus, because Taurus is a physical sign. It's an earth sign, so it's about force through um, the physical quality of force as opposed to energy that we have in us, the fire, the drive, which is Aries. Taurus actually brings it out into the material world. So it is, it can be much more of a physical abuse energy. So I would say uh, about three weeks from now, really pay attention to the news. So that would be, um, right at the same time that Uranus, or that, excuse me, May 12th and 13th, when everything's going retrograde, it's last week's podcast, go listen to it. I, I actually also have a blog about it. If you go to angeliczodiac.com, you can read all about the retrogrades, the transitions and ingresses of a few other planets into new signs between the 12th and 13th. It will be a significant week. And Mercury moving into Taurus is one of the significators of uh, more aggress aggression, but Mercury moving into Taurus, Taurus, while it's more of a physical expression of the energy of uh, Mars, Mercury is a thinker and a communicator. So moving into Taurus makes him a little bit restricted. He holds back more. He, he has to ground. He has to understand things in a practical way, going from here to there and then really integrating it in his body. And so when Mercury moves into Taurus, there will probably be this culmination at the end degrees of Aries, and then a push into Taurus 
that will calm things a bit more and be a little bit more staid in society. But know that it can also, in the next three weeks, we're going to all be quite a bit more agitated, irritated, and ready for a fight um, collectively in the, the collective consciousness, definitely with um, our, the president at the helm, he incites this energy. He wants people to get frustrated and act out because that gives him power. So we're gonna see more of that for the next three weeks. It will definitely be that push. Now, when Mercury goes into Taurus, we will be much more, um, much more about the energy of calmness and feminine energy. And so know that that's on the horizon. Um, we've got Neptune at 19 degrees of Pisces uh, in conjunct to Mercury right now. So there is a disconnection between our emotions and how we think and communicate. On some level, Pisces energy is very cooperative and laissez-faire. They just say, hey, that's fine, whatever, and uh, want to embrace the collective that we are all the same. We have things in common, whereas Mercury right now is like I said, very forceful, wanting to take action and getting very frustrated with what's going on, not gonna lie. Um, of course, Mercury is moving into a square with Pluto and Uranus. So we're going, sorry, I just lost my, my um, computer energy here. My computer went black for screensaver. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get just the right lighting. There you go. Um, so yeah, we've got that energy moving in of a square to Pluto and Jupiter. Pluto and Jupiter are only two degrees apart in Capricorn. Right now, Jupiter went over Pluto, which was um, really when we went on lockdown about that same time and uh, stayed home. So as he retrogrades, and I want to look and double check, I think he was also one of the entities that retrogrades. Venus, yeah, Jupiter retrogrades May 14th. So he's going to be slowing down. This is um, interesting because uh, yesterday Trump said something about immigration is going to be contained for about two months. Then I read this morning he's backing off of that, which is really interesting because Jupiter is about the immigration and then Jupiter retrograde uh, backing off. Now is really going to be a time where um, there's going to be the square in the sky. I'll do it like that square between Jupiter and Pluto and um, Mercury, Moon, Sun, Uranus. Uh, the Moon will be out of there within a couple days, but Mercury is moving closer and closer to Taurus, and then the Sun is in Taurus coming up on Uranus. So the square right there is the end degrees of Aries to the Pluto Capricorn, and then the beginning degrees of the Sun and Uranus in Taurus. So that's going to really churn up this uh, collective resistance to control. And also the Capricorn energy is going to incite people to want to control, want to go back to the way it used to be, Pluto retrograding next week, Jupiter retrograding in a couple weeks. So we're going back. We want to have that consistency, the groundedness we felt or feel, I should say, we're still there. So we're still looking for the groundedness, like we're still trying to find our footing on what's going on. So over the course of the summer, we've got all these planets that are back and forth over each other, moving into new signs. And we're going to see a lot of shift back and forth. Venus is in Gemini right now, not gonna lie. It's within a couple degrees of Trump's sun. So there is this sense that he feels there's cooperation with females because Venus is the feminine energy. Gemini, he can feel a cooperative energy, you know, the, the communication, the flirtation, quite honestly, that's very flirty energy in the zodiac. And then um, it can also be duality. So he may say this and then do that, or he may say this and then change his mind and, and wanna go a different direction because it's directly affecting his son. Um, because it's always also square to Neptune, there is a collective emotional disconnect to the decisions, to the desires of what he's doing right now because he's in square to Neptune. So it is a disconnect between the collective emotional consciousness and what his decisions are. So that's going to be pointed for the next few weeks, or not, not even next few weeks, next week. 
And then Venus will move through uh, Gemini. And I believe she also moves in at two weeks. She moves into, um, into Cancer in May also, right around the same time all the planets are changing. And so that becomes much more of a dynamic around home and family. So there may be two weeks where we're kind of, I want to say dabbling with the idea of these people, um, go, all of us going back to work, and then we're going to pull back again. So it's definitely kind of a, a go forward, go back, go forward, go back. And so I just want you to be aware of that. Um, gosh, I really hope that we're still recording. Let's see. Okay. So, yeah. Anyway, um, let's see what else we've got. Mars in Aquarius at 15. He is sextile to Mercury. Um, it's a moving out aspect. In other words, Mars is at 15 and Mercury is going away from him. Like now they're moving out of that sextile energy. So definitely Mars in Aquarius is about personal power and moving into your own personal power, taking action towards things that will give you the ability to work on your own. And that seems obvious in the current conditions that we're dealing with right now. But um, personally, I've just been really making more and more effort to doing online work than I ever have and connecting to people via Zoom or the internet or my social media sites. So um, I think that that's really the key right now as we are coming up on the dawning of the age of Aquarius. And I was thinking uh, this week, like what will this be called in history? Like historically, what are they going to call this time? And you know, there's the great pause or um, the, I call it the lost year because it's pretty much in a way, what seems like a lost year, we are all kind of lost. But as we go forward, it is really literally the dawning of the age of Aquarius. It is the dawn. So we are seeing all of this energy that we're having to understand and learn how to navigate in a new way. And um, personally, again, because my Saturn's in late Aquarius, I feel at home, I feel at home at home. That's, and it's in my house, a home and family, which is in alignment with the US chart. So this is like, I'm coming into how it is for me and what feels comfortable for me to integrate all of the technology and talk to you from my home. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really a view, a window into my world because I feel very comfortable right now. I felt more myself now than I have in a long time. And it feels really good, which is ironic because I have a lot of Scorpio in my chart and, you know, Saturn and or Scorpio and Aquarius square each other. But Aquarius is a really amenable energy that wants to embrace everybody, that wants to clear out the clutter that we have hoarded. And um, Capricorn can hold on to things because they don't want to let go and release. And so that can be a bit of a hoarder mentality with Capricorn. You wouldn't think so because Capricorn is very organized, but it is a time where all the organized things, you know, we label them, we organize them, and then they sit there forever. Now it's time to go through all those closets, all those ways of organizing. But as we move into this Aquarius energy, we are clearing out and releasing and detaching because Aquarius doesn't want to be bogged down with the emotionality of things. And so we're feeling that Mars just barrels right through and does what it thinks it needs to do because Aquarius brings in all these ideas, these inventiveness ideas, the inventions, and Mars says, yeah, let's get going with it. Let's do this thing. So um, we're seeing that as well. Anyway, um, we also have the nodes moving into Gemini and um, Sagittarius soon, and I don't quite know. Let me see. I'm jumping ahead here again. Let's see if I can find when the nodes shift. I don't know if my um, planner, this is my daily planner guide, planetary guide. You know, I always talk about it because it's my favorite thing. It helps me keep on everything. Okay, so we're just gonna go over to the back and see, and I'm running out of time here. Okay, I've got about four minutes left. So we're gonna hustle and see if we can find this. So the nodes move into, um, Hang on, I'm just Capricorn, um, Cancer, Cancer, Cancer. Gemini, where are you? My goodness, where did you go? 
Oh, okay, here we are. Yeah, so the first week of May, May 6th, the nodes will move in to Gemini and Sagittarius, which means we are going to have a collective shift to our duality and how we think versus how we act. So we're gonna see that dynamic play out in society more. And I'll talk about that a little bit more at another podcast. But anyway, I'm running out of time. I got about two minutes left to say thank you for showing up. I'm sorry if I'm still getting used to this technology. Um, I'm not really sure how to integrate all of the things I wanna do on Zoom yet, but that's why I'm doing this um, every week to force myself to do it. I put it off and put it off and now I'm finally doing it. But if you would like to have a reading with me, please go to angeliczodiac.com. I love doing one-on-one -on -one readings with people because I can get in deeper to the dynamics of a chart and it doesn't sound um, as much, you know, like, okay, there's this and this and this. You really get a fleshed out reading and um, you can understand more nuances. So I really like that. And I hope you give that a shot. You can get again, angeliczodiac.com. You can also book a reading on Facebook and uh, Facebook. You can get me at angelic zodiac for one page, astro energy page. And I'm putting all of my links to when I'm on the air there. And um, let me see what astro energy. And I do still have astrologer angel, but I'm really weaning off of that. So new moon, do a ritual, plant some seeds. You're going to have a lot of good things growing. I planted under the waning moon, which I know better, but I did it anyway. And now I have one lone little sprout of lavender and it's probably not going to survive. So I'll replant those seeds under the new moon tonight. And uh, yeah, grow something great. We're in a new cycle. It's going to really um, stimulate us, that square. It's going to be friction for us to have to get going on something and you'll feel it, but go with the ideas. Aquarius is looking to tell you something. And that's the show for today. So thank you, bye. See you next week. Take care. And there's Taylor again, cause you know, we heart Taylor. <laughs> anyway hi and welcome. so hi it's Shelly let's see if I can get lighter lighter and brighter that might be better hi so welcome to the astro energy show actually let me do that again <laughs> welcome to the astro energy astrology show podcast this week it is april 22nd and i'm going to be probably looking over here a little bit it won't be as fluid but um get that straightened up.